Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the depth of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on the tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him 
receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter to the Colossians. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 2. Matthew's gospel is the only one from which we learn that the resurrection of Jesus was accompanied by an earthquake. It's only one of several features that make Matthew's resurrection account the most dramatic among the four gospels. Only Matthew tells us of an angel who descended from heaven and whose appearance was like lightning. Only Matthew tells us of Roman soldiers guarding the tomb and who, because they were terrified, became like dead men. And only Matthew tells us that the resurrection of Jesus was accompanied by an earthquake. An earthquake is a strong image, and contemplating Matthew's account, I believed it might provide a compelling focal point for an Easter message. Further reflection led to some reservations. An earthquake may be a strong image, but it's not often, if ever, a strong positive image. Some of us may be fascinated by earthquakes. Few, if any, of us want to be in one. So I did what the savvy preacher does these days, a Google search. What is good about an earthquake? The results were not promising. The first Google result began with a summary titled, Earthquakes, Good and Bad. First, the bad. Earthquakes cause significant injury, destruction of property, and loss of life. Then the good. Energy released during earthquakes provides information about Earth's interior. An entry at ask.com offers this contradiction. Earthquakes are good because if this energy were not released, it would cause a lot of damage. Hmm. And then Wiki Answers says, if the earthquake takes place in your neighborhood, there's nothing good about it. You would think by now I would choose a different main image for an Easter sermon. But as the old saying go, goes, fools rush in where angels fear to tread. Only in this instance, I'm asking you to rush with me to the place where an angel has already trodden, an angel that has come from God, an angel that has rolled away a tombstone, an angel who announces resurrection, accompanied by an earthquake. So how can the earthquake positively inform our own understanding or experience of resurrection? Well, as a starting point, earthquakes are vivid and highly memorable. Psychologists have learned that people who have been in a major earthquake can remember the event in remarkable detail years later. You or I may know people whose conversion to a life of faith, or whose life-changing turning point took place when they were shaken by a great upheaval that they can still recall in vivid detail. So perhaps Matthew notes the earthquake in conjunction with Christ's resurrection partly because he does not want his readers, including you and me, to simply yawn it off. 
This is a pay attention moment. A great earthquake such as Matthew describes is memorable in large part because it is an expression of great power. And in particular, the divine power with which the Bible is concerned from beginning to end. This power of God, demonstrated in Matthew's resurrection account, directly confronts, addresses, and puts in perspective the lesser and often narcissistic, cruel, or otherwise misguided powers of this world. In case you missed them, those powers of this world are uniquely and prominently featured in Matthew's resurrection account. They are the Roman soldiers guarding the tomb. They have been well-trained and they are well-armed. They are backed by the authority and power of the empire. And they were fully confident that they were in complete control of the situation up until the earthquake. Those soldiers and their example cause me to wonder what tomb or tombs I may imagine that I have been assigned to guard. Not literal tombs, but tombs of memory or grief or decades-old expectations about how things will be and should be. In many cases, neither God nor I nor others are any longer being served by whatever I've buried and continue to guard. But I am still keeping vigil with heavy weaponry And with alternating smug confidence and terror, I believe that I can maintain control in my own empire and keep what's buried, buried. Until there is a great earthquake. I'm grateful that the resurrection account in Matthew shows us not only terrified soldiers, but also the women who had come to the tomb. Like the soldiers, the women are, at least initially, frightened. But whereas the soldiers shook and became like dead men, the women, upon hearing the angel's announcement, left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy. The earthquake and the angel's greeting have reversed their sorrowful expectations, broken open their tombs of grief, and begun to allow in light and wonder. Soon Jesus himself appears to them. And what are his first words to them? Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Few, if any of us, may want to experience a great earthquake, but Matthew may have included the earthquake in his resurrection story to remind us that a power so much greater than ourselves was at work in Christ and is waiting to be at work in us. Matthew may have also known from his own life experience and observations that sometimes our old expectations or our ego fortifications or defenses need to be shaken. Sometimes the tombstone we've been guarding needs to be rolled aside to prepare us for something new. That's something we Christians often recognize as God's Resurrection life in Christ. Earlier, I mentioned my futile efforts by way of a Google search to learn anything positive about earthquakes. I did, however, come across one compelling account of an earthquake by the American naturalist John Muir describing 
one of his first explorations in Yosemite in California, Muir wrote, I was awakened by a tremendous earthquake. The strange, thrilling motion could not be mistaken. And I ran out of my cabin, both glad and frightened, feeling sure I was going to learn something. That story may feel particularly timely for many of us now because of the image of Muir running out of his cabin, something we ourselves are mostly unable to do at this time. For some of us, our own cabins may in fact be starting to feel like tombs. But let us imagine and hope and pray for the day soon when we will once again go forth freely, curiously, joyfully, not taking it for granted. What would it be like for us to go out as Muir wrote of himself after the earthquake, not only both glad and frightened, but also feeling sure that we are going to learn something. What if, even in our cabins now, Christ is seeking to greet us and say, do not be afraid? What if, in the midst of all of it, we better saw and felt and understood the resurrection that God not only shows us in Christ, but promises and intends for each of us. Amen. And now, using the words of the Nicene Creed, let us confess the faith that we share, saying, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. I invite your prayers and your thanksgivings for our world and nation, for our city and neighborhoods, for the concerns, hopes, and thanksgivings of our own households. Creator of the universe, you made the world in beauty and you restore all things in glory through the victory of Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, O living God. Empower and bless your people throughout the world to follow Christ, to share in his communion, and wherever they may be, 
to continue his ministry of healing and reconciliation. Glory and praise to you, O living God. Reveal yourself in and through us, that wherever your image is still disfigured by poverty, sickness, selfishness, war, and greed, the new creation in Jesus Christ may appear in justice, love, and peace, to the glory of your name. Glory and praise to you, O living God. Give wisdom to those who serve and lead our community, state, and nation, that the common good of all may be pursued and enjoyed. Glory and praise to you, O living God. Shed your eternal light on all who have died, especially those who have inspired and encouraged us by their witness and example of faith. Glory and praise to you, O living God. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you.
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. 
On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Anne, her mother, blessed Michael, the archangel, our patron, and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
Sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are they who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The Easter blessing is in four parts. I welcome your robust and thankful amen after each. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. Amen. 
May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin, into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be within you, be amongst you, and remain with you forever. The Lord be with you, and also with you. The Mass is ended. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.